babangu wetu Jamini baya ule tabauti kwetu Tutende mima mungu ametua ikitaji Tutitenge na maofu wenzangu Nipo tukamuone baba mungu wetu Jamini baya ule tabauti kwetu Tutende mima mungu ametua ikitaji Haleluya. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Bwana asifiwe. Pigiani Bwana Yesu makofi mazuri. Haleluya. Amen. Pigieni wanakwaya makofi mazuri pia. Haleluya. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I like talking with my hands a lot so you will allow me use this. Ninapenda kuongea nikiwa mikono yangu iko huru na kutumia mikono yangu kwa hivyo mtaniruhusu nitumie hicho kifaa. Yes, this is the worship team Sunday. Hii ni Jumapili ya kikundi cha kusifu na kuabudu and we bless the Lord for the opportunity na tunabariki Mungu kwa sababu ya nafasi to serve kumtumikia. Amen. Amen. Let's pray before we begin. Tuombe kabla tuanze. Father in heaven we want to thank you and to bless your holy name. Baba wa mbinguni tunataka kushukuru na kubariki jina lako. We thank you for the privilege to be in your house this morning. Tunakushukuru kwa utunuku la kuwa katika nyumba yako asubuhi ya leo. We thank you dear Lord for we have seen your hand throughout the week. Tunakushukuru bwana mpendo kwa sababu tumeona mkono wako katika juma zima. And now that you have brought us into this moment to hear your word. Na sasa kwamba umetuleta katika wakati huu kulisikiza neno lako. We ask O oh Lord that you will flow through us. Toomba bwana kwamba utamiminika kutupitia. Give us words to speak. Tupe maneno ya kunena. May you speak in our stead. Nena kabadala yetu. And we ask that you will cause this word to bear fruit in our hearts and in the hearts of the listeners. Na tunaomba kwamba neno hili utalisababisha likaze matunda katika maisha yetu na maisha ya wasikizaji. May you increase as we decrease dear Lord. Ongezeka tunapopungua e Bwana mpendo. We bless you and we thank you. Tukubariki na tukushukuru. In Jesus name we pray. Katika jina la Yesu tumeomba. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Amen. You're welcome to take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Mekaribisha kuketi katika uwepo wa Bwana. I thank God for the song that the choir has sung. Nashukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya wimbo ambao wana kwaya wameimba. They were singing about one of the blessed attitudes or the beatitudes in Matthew 5. Walikuwa wanaomba kuhusiana na zile baraka ama zile heri katika kitabu cha Mathayo. 
And the scripture we are going to read or the scriptures we are going to read this morning. Na maandiko ambayo tunaenda kusoma asubuhi ya leo. They are in line with that particular song. Yanauiana na wimbo huo. So we are going to read three scriptures which we are going to use as our reference point. Tunaenda kusoma masomo mara tatu ambayo ndio tutatumia kama masomo yetu makuu. Uh, the topic that we will be covering today na uh, mada ambayo tutakuwa tunasoma leo is salt and light ni chumvi na nuru our god given mandate mamlaka yaliyopewa kwetu na Mungu salt and light chumvi na nuru our god given mandate kama mamlaka tuliyopewa na Mungu so let's turn our bibles to the book of matthew chapter 5 kwa hivyo twende katika biblia yetu katika kitabu cha mathayo sura ya 5 from verse 12 to 20 kuanzia mstari wa 12 hadi 20 and I'd prefer that we read from the new living translation because there are certain concepts that I want us to grasp from Na that naomba, naomba kwamba tukasome kutoka hiyo na kale ya NLT kwa sababu kuna mambo ambayo nataka tushike kutoka pale and I will read tasoma be happy about it be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven and remember the ancient prophets were persecuted too you are the salt of the earth But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it useful again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a mountain, glowing in the night for all to see. Don't hide your light under the basket. Instead, put it on a stand and let it shine for all. In the same way, Let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to fulfill them. I assure you, until heaven and earth disappear, even the smallest detail of God's law will remain until its purpose is achieved. So if you break the smallest commandment and teach others to do the same you will be the least in the kingdom of heaven but anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be great in the kingdom of heaven but I warn you unless you obey God better than the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees do you can't enter the kingdom of heaven at all Bible nasema Furahini na kushangilia kwa kuwa thawabu yenu ni kubwa mbinguni kwa maana ndivyo walivyowaudhi manabii waliokuwa kabla yenu ninyi ni chumvi ya dunia lakini chumvi ikiwa imeharibika itatiwa nini hata ikolee haifai tena kabisa ila kutupwa nje na kukanyagwa na watu ninyi ni nuru ya ulimwengu miji haiwezi uh, miji, mji hauwezi kusitirika ukiwa juu ya mlima wala watu hawa, si, hawa, hawashi ta na kuiweka chini ya pishi bali juu ya kiango nayo yawaangaza wote waliomo nyumbani vivyo hivyo nuru yenu na iangaze mbele ya watu wapate kuyaona matendo yenu mema wamtukuze baba yenu aliye mbinguni msidani ya kuwa muliku, nalikuja kuitangua torati au manabii la sikuja kutangua bali kutimiliza kwa maana amini nawaambia mpaka mbingu na nchi zitakapoondoka Yodi moja wala nukta moja ya torati haitaondoka hata yote yatimie basi mtu yeyote atakayevunja amri moja katika hizi zilizo ndogo na kuwafundisha watu hivyo ataitwa mdogo kabisa katika ufalme wa mbinguni bali mtu atakayezitenda na kuzifundisha huyo ataitwa mkubwa katika ufalme wa mbinguni maana nawaambia ya kwamba haki yenu isipozidi hiyo haki ya waandishi na mafarisayo hamtaingia kamwe katika ufalme wa mbinguni. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to Luke 14 from verse 34 to 35. Still, Twende katika Luka 14 kuanzia mstari wa 34 35. Still in that new living translation. Katika hiyo tafsiri ya NLT. And the word of the Lord says, salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? Flavorless salt is good neither for the soil for fat- the soil no for fertilizer it is thrown away anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand chumvi ni kitu chema lakini chumvi ikiwa imeharibika itiwe nini iko lee haifai nchi walaja watu huitupa nje mwenye masikio ya kuo ya kus, masikio ya kusikilia na asikie finally john 
uh, mwisho Yohana nane nne. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up and said, all right, stone her. But let those who have never sinned throw the first stones. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Wakamwambia mwalimu mwanamke huyu amefumaniwa alipokuwa kizini. Basi katika Torati Musa alitoamuru kuwapiga kwa mawe wanawake namna hii. Nawe wasemaje? Nao wakasema neno hilo wakimjaribu ili wapate sababu ya kumshtaki lakini Yesu akainama akaandika kwa kidole chake katika nchi nao walipozidi kumhoji alijinua akawaambia yeye asiye na dhambi miongoni mwenu na au wa kwanza wa kumtupia jiwe akainama tena akaandika kwa kidole chake katika nchi nao waliposikia wakashitaki, wakashitakiwa na dhamiri zao wakatoka moja mmoja wakianzia tangu wazee hata wa mwisho wao akabaki Yesu peke yake na yule mwanamke amesimama katikati Then Jesus stood up again and said to her Where are your accusers Didn't even one of them condemn you No Lord she said And Jesus said Neither do I Go and sin no more Jesus said to the people I am the light of the world If you follow me you won't be stumbling through the darkness because you will have the light that leads to life Yesu akajinua asimuone mtu ila yule mwanamke akamwambia mwanamke wako, wako wapi wale washtaki wako je hakuna aliyekuhukumu kuwa na hatia akamwambia hakuna bwana Yesu akamwambia wala mimi sikuhukumu nenenda zako wala usitende dhambi tena basi Yesu akamwambia tena akasema mimi ndimi nuru ya ulimwengu yeye anifuataye hata kwenda gizani kamwe bali atakuwa na nuru ya, ya, ya uzima. Amen and that is the word of the Lord. Na hilo ndilo neno la Bwana. So the background to Matthew chapter 5. Msingi wa kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya 5. In the previous verses Jesus was giving the sermon on the mountain. Katika ile mistari ya kwanza Yesu Kristo alikuwa anapeana mafundisho kwenye mlima. And in the previous scriptures between chapter 1 oh, sorry verse 1 and verse 11 Na katika ile sura za kwanza kuanzia mstari wa kwanza hadi 11 He was describing the impending persecution and the challenges Alikuwa anaeleza jinsi ambavyo kuteswa na changamoto zitakuja that the people would face on account of choosing to live their lives differently ambazo watu wangelikabiliana nazo kwa sababu ya kuchagua kuishi maisha yao tofauti so in the beatitudes when he was talking about blessed are the pure in heart kwa hivyo katika yale mafundisho mlimani ya kusema kwamba heri walio safi mioyoni mwao blessed are you when you are persecuted for heri, righteousness heri munao udhiwa kwa sababu ya haki blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness heri walio na njaa na kiucha haki he was painting a picture of the difference alikuwa anaweka taswira ya utofauti between how they would be received katikati ya jinsi ambavyo wangelipokelewa by those who are of the world na wale wa ulimwengu with regard to how they behave na jinsi ambavyo wangeenenda and he proceeds to give them the role and the reason for which they were to be the salt and the light na anaendelea kuambia sababu na jukumu la wao kuwa chumvi na nuru And I want us to note na nataka tujue that our saltiness and our light are the reasons for which we were put on earth as ya, believers. Ya kwamba hali yetu ya kuwa chumvi na nuru ndio sababu iliyofanya tukawekwa kwenye ulimwengu. And these are what dictate the standards to which we are held to as the children of God. Na hivi ndio vinaelezea vipimo na mipaka ambayo tunaenenda kama watoto wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Amen. And when we look at the phrasing that Jesus used Tukiangalia katika maneno jinsi ambavyo Yesu aliyapanga when he said in Matthew 5 from verse verse 13 I think that is where he says you are the light let's check you are the salt yes Kwanza mstari wa 13 ambapo anasema nyinyi ni chumvi He did not say you will be the salt of the earth Hakusema mtakuwa chumvi ya ulimwengu He did not say you were the salt of the earth Hakusema mlikuwa chumvi ya ulimwengu He used you Ah alisema ninyi ni 
and the word are it denotes second person singular second person singular present and then it also denotes first second and third person plural of present okay so in english we are talking about first person is i second person is you third person is him her or they you remember katika kizungu tulikuwa tunasema ya kwamba mtu wa kwanza ni mimi mtu wa pili ni wewe mtu wa tatu ni wao so this are kwa hivyo hawa ni R can be used in first, second and third person as the present tense of be, the word be. Hili neno linaweza tumika kwa mtu wa kwanza, wa pili na wa tatu na kama neno la sasa. Yes. Kwa mba kuweni. And when we are using that word R, we are implying a state and not an act. Tukiongelea hilo neno, tunaongelea hali na sio tendo. So when he says, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world he is saying you as a person you are in that state as salt and in that state as light anasema kwamba nyinyi katika hali hiyo nyinyi ni ni chumvi na pia nyinyi ni mwanga many times we think that this refers to our actions mara nyingi tunafikiri kwamba hili naongelea matendo yetu but the lord in his wisdom is talking about us being in a state of saltiness and being in a state of light lakini bwana katika hikima yake anaongelea kwamba sisi ni kuwa katika hali hiyo ya kuwa katika chumvi hali hiyo ya kuwa ni ya nuru and the reason i am insisting that it is a state of being and not actions na sababu ambayo inanifanya nasisitiza kwamba ni hali ya kuwa na sio tendo tu is because actions change depending on the situations and depending on the people ni kwa sababu tendo hubadilika kulingana na hali na kulingana na watu and no matter how much we try to pretend na hajalishi jinsi our nature always surfaces so when we act like so when we give actions to to show that we are salt or we are light kwa hivyo tukijaribu kuonyesha matendo kwamba sisi ni chumvi ama nuru Those actions can change somewhere along the way. But when we embody the state of being the salt and being the light, we will consistently and constantly mirror that image. Tutaendelea pasipo kubadilika kuonyesha hiyo hali. Are we together? Je, tuko pamoja? Yes. So to be kwa hivyo kukua katika hiyo hali which is the past tense of is ambayo ni wakati uliopita wa ako it means to have identity with inamaanisha kwamba kuwa na utambulisho wa or to constitute the same idea or object ama kukuwa na mawazo ama na kitu kile kile an example is to be more like jesus mfano ni kuwa kama yesu kristo and that is a phrase that we often use as christians we want to be more like jesus ndio msemo wote tunatumia kila wakati wa kristo kwamba tunataka tuwe kama yesu it also means to have a specified qualification or characterization inamaanisha pia kwamba kuhitimu kwa njia fulani ama na mienendo fulani so our qualification or our characterization kwa hivyo kuhitimu kwetu ama vielelezo vyetu To, is to be salt ni kukua chumvi is to be light ni kukua nuru and then it also means to have an objective existence na pia inamaanisha kwamba ni kuwa hali ya, ya, ya kuwepo la, ya, na lengo it means that means we are an object to fulfill a certain purpose or a certain role inamaanisha kwamba sisi ni chombo cha kutimiliza kusudi fulani ama kazi fulani and then finally it means to maintain na mwisho pia inamaanisha kusalia to occupy kuka a place mahali a situation ha, katika hali or a position ama katika nafasi fulani so there is a certain place situation or position kwa hivyo kuna mahali fulani nafasi ama hali that we are meant to occupy in this earth as ha, the salt and ha, as the light ambayo tunafaa kuemo katika ulimwengu huu kama chumvi ama nuru so if we were to coin a statement kwa hivyo kama tulikuwa tutengeneza msemo we would say being the salt and the light means a state of executing properties eh tungelisema ya kwamba kuwa katika hali ya kuwa chumvi ni hali ya kutekeleza mienendo fulani likened to the characteristics of salt and light inayofananishwa na chumvi na nuru so wherever we are kwa hivyo kokota tuliko 
We are meant to occupy the position of being the salt. Tunafaa kuwa katika ile nafasi ya kuwa chumvi. We are meant to be an object of God's use to be salt on the earth. Tunafaa kuwa chombo cha kutumiwa na Mungu kama chumvi hapa ulimwenguni. We are meant to act as people who have been qualified to be the salt and the light of the world. Tunakusudiwa kutenda kama watu waliohitimu kuwa chumvi na nuru ya ulimwengu. And we are meant to maintain our identity as the salt and the light of the world. Na tunafaa kuendelea kuhudhirisha hali kwamba sisi ni chumvi na nuru ya ulimwengu. Hallelujah. Amen. So when the Lord is talking about salt in Luke Kwa hivyo Bwana anapoongelea chumvi katika kitabu cha Luka chapter 14 from verse 34 to 35 Sura ya 14:34-35 The salt that he was referring for referring to in verse 35 Chumvi ambayo alikuwa anaongelea katika msura 35 is the salt that can be used in fertilizer Ni chumvi ambayo inaweza tumika katika mbolea Fertilizer zetu Kenya huwa zimeandikwa NPK Eh mbolea zetu hapa Kenya zimeandikwa NPK. N standing for nitrous salts eh, or nitrogen salts. N N ni chumvi ya aina ya nitrogen. P standing for potassium salts. Pia pia ni aina ya chumvi ya potassium. Actually that is phosphorus salts not potassium. Eh. And then the K is what stands for the potassium salts. Kisha pia kuna chumvi ya aina ya potassium. And culturally the Jews used to use raw salt. Na kitamaduni wa Yahudi walikuwa wanatumia chumvi ambayo haijakolea. That they had harvested from the shores of the Dead Sea. Ambayo walikuwa wameivuna kutoka kwenye ufuo wa bahari. In their farms as fertilizer. Walikuwa wanatumia katika mashamba yao kama mbolea. So they would go and pick this salt in its raw form. Kwa hivyo wangelienda tu kukusanya hiyo chumvi kwenye ufuo wa bahari ya Shamu. And then they would pour it into their soil. Kisha wangemwaga katika mchanga wao. Now the, the salt that they would pick from the shores chumvi ambayo wangekusanya kutoka kwa ufuo was a potassium based salt. Ilikuwa ni chumvi ya aina ya potassium. Ile chumvi huwa tunatumia kwa meza huwa inaitwa sodium chloride mm. meaning it is a sodium based salt. Inamaanisha ni chumvi ya aina ya sodium. But the salt that they would put in their shambas lakini chumvi ambayo wangeweka kwenye mashamba yao was made of potassium ilikuwa inatengenezwa na potassium and what potassium does for our plants na kile ambacho hicho kiungo kinafanya kwenye mimea yetu it aids in the bearing of good fruit ina, ina, inasaidia kwa kuzaa matunda mazuri so inafanya maua zinakuwa zile nzuri good quality maua ndio mm. matunda ikikuja kutoka it is a good yield inakuwa ni nzuri inakuwa tunda nzuri so When we when he was talking about if salt has lost its use it's not even good for fertilizer. Kwa hivyo wakati alikuwa anasema kwamba iwapo chumvi sio nzuri sio nzuri hata kwa ajili ya mbolea. He was referring to that salt which they would put in their shambas for fertilizer. Alikuwa anaongelea hiyo chumvi ambayo angewaleweka kwa shamba yao kama mbolea. And this same salt na hiyo hiyo chumvi would be used to disinfect surfaces ingetumia kusafisha uh, um, meza ama vitu vyombo and it would also be used to disinfect their fecal matter na pia ingesaidia kuua uh, 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 hali ya magonjwa katika uh, uchafu wao back then hawakuwa na pit latrines they did not have any form of pit vio. latrines so what they used to do is they would go to the corner in Wang the backyard of the home wangelienda kwenye pembe kwenye boma and they would dig up some sand na wange wange chimbua chimbua changarawe they would help themselves wange jisaidia huko and then they would sprinkle that salt there kisha wange nyunyiza pale ile chumvi what that salt was meant to do kile chumvi ilikuwa inafanya it was to kill bacteria ilikuwa ya kuua bacteria so even if anyone was to handle that matter to put in the shamba Kwaiba, as fertilizer hata kama mtu angelichukua na weke kwenye shamba kama mbolea they would not get sick hawange gonjeka So what does this mean? Inamaanisha nini? When he likened us to this salt used for fertilizer. Alipotufananisha na hii chumvi ambayo ni inatumika kwa mbolea. He meant that we are to encourage the growth of righteous things. Ile anamaanisha ya kwamba tunafaa kuhimiza kukuzwa kwa vitu vitakatifu. To encourage the growth of good things. Kuhimiza hali ya kukuza vitu vitakatifu. And to discourage the growth of bad things. Na kufutilia mbali kukua kwa vitu vibaya. Anything that is of God should be encouraged to grow around us. Chochote ambacho ni cha Mungu kinafaa kukubaliwa kikuzwe. And anything that is not of God should be discouraged from growing around us. Na chochote kisicho cha Mungu hakistahili kuruhusiwa kumea kando yetu. 
This is a property that will set us apart from the people of the world. This is a property that will set us apart from the people who are secularized as Christians. It is our divine mandate to ensure that wherever we go the things of God are growing. It is our mandate to ensure wherever we go the things of the enemy are not growing. Righteousness should be surrounding us Whenever we walk into a place where there is sin The people should feel uncomfortable we should not, Yes, we should not endeavor to make people feel comfortable around us in their sin Instead we are meant to cause these things to die The disinfectant properties of the potash salt And we are of no use If we are not in direct contact with the world When he says we are the salt of the earth He implies this very ground that we are walking on So wherever our sphere of influence is We are meant to cause the things of God to grow We are meant to cause the evil things of the world to die around us we operate by being present and not by being absent. So we are not good enough being salt in this container called church. We are meant to be distributed out there. The places where we work is our mission field. Our families are our mission field. Our spheres where we interact with people that is our mission field our salt must be salty hallelujah Amen. we are mandated to ensure that people have contact with God Tumepe, wherever we go in the same way when this salt lands on the soil it changes the properties of the soil when we land wherever we are landing in the world we are meant to change the properties of that place where we are in and, and it is this very reason that causes us to angaliwe na chukizo na hiyo sababu ndio inafanya watu wanatuangalia na chuki there is contempt and disgust towards the church of god for this reason kuna aina fulani ya chuki kwa kanisa la mungu kwa sababu hii and na this thing is double edged for those who are practicing their saltiness wanachukiwa for those who are not practicing and they call themselves Christians pia wanachukiwa the ones on this side are being hated because they are not practicing what they preach and it is unfortunate that a study which was done was shown that people in churches and in Christian based organizations are considered to be among the most corrupt in our nation is that characteristic of us being salt is that characteristic of us being light? We must not be altered or mixed in with other things that are not, are not of God. Ukimwaga chumvi ndani ya unga ya chapo, alafu uiweke kwa mchele. Utasikia hiyo flavor kweli? Ukimwaga tu chumvi ndani ya unga ya chapo, uchanganye vizuri and then you pick that and Seize on your rice with it. Yani unataka kukula mchele na na uchukue unga uchanganya na chumvi kisha utumie hiyo huo mchanganyiko kama chumvi kwa mchele. Iyo rice, iyo rice itaonja kweli? Itaonja la dayachumvi? La. 
So we are not meant to be mixed in with other things. If we are salt, we are salt and that is how we stay. Kwa hivyo hatustahili kuchanganywa na vitu vingine kama ni chumvi tuko chumvi na inatosha. The word of the Lord in 2 Corinthians 6:17 says, "Come out and be separate." Neno la Mungu katika Wakorintho 2:6:17 inasema kwamba ondokeni na mujitenga na wao. That is how we are supposed to be as the salt as the salt of the world. Hivyo ndivyo tunafaa kuwa kama chumvi ya ulimwengu. Statistically speaking katika mambo ya utafiti wa hesabu if 5% of us in any community anywhere iwapo asilimia yetu 5 katika jamii yote mahali popote wa actually salt and light wangekuwa chumvi na nuru actually let's just start with salt twanza tuna chumvi social trends would reverse mitindo ya ya, ya kijamii ingelibadilika Cultural norms would change. Tamaduni na desturi pia zingalibadilika. Just 5% of us. Asilimia 5 tu ya wakristo. Think about a place kwenye unakuanga hatuko watu wa covenant huko unakuanga tu peke yako. Mm. Wewe na watu wengine hapo wenye mna constitute 5%. Kama mungekuwa salt vile mnafaa kukua the things vitu zenye tunaona ziki happen saa hii hazingekuwa zina happen. Juu tungekuwa tuna influence how watu when they come in contact with us wanabadilika na wao wanaenda wanabadilisha wengine wanabadilisha wengine hata tukisimama kama watu wa Mungu kusema lesbianism is wrong gayism is wrong polygamy is wrong wangekuwa wanatusikiza and these things would change that is how much impact we are to have in our world today. Hivyo ndio tunastahili kuleta mabadiliko katika ulimwengu wetu leo hii. But unfortunately salt is currently losing its flavor. Lakini ubaya ni kwamba chumvi inapoteza ladha yake. And it is losing its value. Na inapoteza thamani yake. We are trying to be humanistic. Tunajaribu kuwa wa ulimwengu wa nadhani. Yes, we are trying to secularize even things in the church. Tunajaribu kufanya hata vitu vya kanisani viwa vya ulimwengu. We want our churches to be comfortable so that tukue na watu wengi kwa kanisa. Tunataka makanisa yetu yao utulivu ili We are entertaining sin that we ought not to entertain. Tunakubalia dhambi na tustahili kuburudisha dhambi. If we lose our saltiness the word of the Lord tells us we cannot get it back. Tukipoteza ladha yetu ya chumvi Biblia neno la Mungu linasema hatuwezi tukarejesha. If we need to understand tutahitaji kuelewa If this world was a ship, iwapo ulimwengu huu ungelikuwa ni meli, the church is the lifeboat. Eh, kanisa ndio kile chombo cha cha, cha kuokoa. This world is sinking. Ulimwengu huu unazama. People are meant to be jumping into the lifeboat for their salvation. Watu wanafaa kwa wanaruka kwenye chombo cha kuokoa maisha kwa ajili ya wokovu. The thing is if the sea jumps with us into the lifeboat shida ni kwamba bahari ikiruka pamoja nasi katika hiki chombo we will drown and no one will be saved so tutazama hakuna atakayeokolewa so we need to ensure that we are maintaining our saltiness ndio mtu mwenye anataka kuokoka kikuja kukaa na sisi wanaokoka kweli kweli amen so kwa hivyo tunahitaji kuhakikisha kwamba tunabakia na ladha yetu ya chumvi ili kwamba yule ambaye anakuja kwetu anabadilika na pia yeye anakuwa kama chumvi and despite the current trends we are are meant to embrace the pain that comes with standing out for Jesus. Pasipo kujali mitindo iliyoko sasa tunahitaji bado kukumbatia ule uchungu ambao unaambatana na kusimama kwa ajili ya Yesu. Can you imagine being poor in spirit? Fikiria kukuwa maskini katika roho which means being despised by the world. Ina maanisha kwamba umepuuzwa na ulimwengu. And lacking in self confidence. Na hata kukosa ile hali ya ujasiri wa kibinafsi. In a world that is confident in their own capabilities and capacities katika ulimwengu ambao unaaminia uwezo wake na 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 na, 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 na vyenendo, vyenendo yake Jeremiah 17:7 encourages us that blessed is he who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him confidence yeah. Is in him. Yeremia 17:7 inatuhimiza kwamba amebarikiwa mtumaini yeye Bwana na tumaini lake limo katika huyo Bwana. So despite people being confident in their own capabilities and confident in their money and confident in their influence. Kwa hivyo pasipokujali watu kukuaminia nguvu zao, uwezo wao na pesa zao na ushawishi wao 
We as the children of God are meant to be poor in spirit and to have our confidence in the one true God. Sisi kama wana Mungu tunafaa kuwa maskini katika roho lakini kuwa na tumaini katika Mungu mkuu. Currently there is a lot of pride going around unfortunately even in our church circles. Sasa hivi kuna kiburi kingi kimejiinua sana sasa ubaya ni kwamba hata katika makanisa yetu. The spirit is rampant nowadays there is no longer poverty of spirit. Roho ya kiburi ipo sana siku hizi hakuna umaskini wa roho. We want to laugh when others are laughing when the scriptures tells us blessed are they who weep. Eh, tunataka kucheka wakati wengine wanacheka tunasahau maandiko anasema kwamba wamebarikiwa wanaolia. The Lord tells us blessed are they who are meek in an aggressive world. Bwana anatuambia kwamba heri walionyenyekevu katika ulimwengu ulio na fujo nyingi. Everybody wants to push back. Kila mtu anataka kusukuma na kulipiza kisasi. Even with, it, within the church everyone wants to push back. Hata kanisani kila mtu anataka kusukumilia. We are corrected, we get aggressive, we push back. Tunarekebishwa, tunakuwa wakali, tunasukuma. We are told the direction we are going is wrong, we throw tantrums. Tuna tunaambiwa zile mwenendo tunaenda ni mbaya, tunaanza kukua na fujo. The word of the Lord tells us blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Neno la Mungu linasema kwamba wamebarikiwa maheri walio na We are not to hunger and thirst for fame, power or wealth but to thirst for righteousness. Hatustahili kuwa na njaa ya kusifika pesa ama utajiri lakini kwa ajili ya haki na utakatifu. A world that is filled with cruelty needs us to be merciful because that is our mandate to show mercy. Ulimwengu ambao umejaa na kutokuhurumia tunafaa kujawa na huruma kwa sababu wamebarikiwa walio na huruma. In a competitive and opportunistic world we are meant to show mercy. Katika ulimwengu ambao kuna mabishano na mashindano bado tunafaa kuonyesha huruma. The word of the Lord tells us blessed are the pure in heart. Neno la Bwana linatuambia heri waliona moyo safi. Being pure in heart means unmixed you have no ulterior motives inside you. Kuwa na moyo msafi inamaanisha hujachanganyikiwa, hujachanganywa, hauna nia mbaya ndani mwako. The word of the Lord tells us to have simple motives. Neno la Bwana linasema kwamba tuwe na nia ya ukweli iliyo wazi ya urahisi. And that is how we will see God. Na hivyo ndivyo tutamuona Mungu. But nowadays people have different motives for joining different ministries, joining different places. Lakini siku hizi watu wako na nia tofauti ya kujiunga na huduma tofauti ya kujiunga na mahali tofauti. We cannot just be kind for the sake of being kind. We want to be kind so that we get something in return. Hatuwezi tukawa wema kwa sababu tunaambia tuwe wema bali tunakuwa wema kwa sababu tunataka kupata malipo fulani. The Lord today is calling us out of that. Bwana leo anatuita kutoka kwa hayo. The word of the Lord tells us blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness. Neno la Mungu linasema kwamba heri wanaudhiwa kwa ajili ya haki. So it is a guarantee that we will be hurt by the words of people for standing out. Kwa hivyo ni hakikisha kwamba tutaumizwa na maneno ya kwa sababu ya kusimama kwa haki. But despite that heart we are meant to stand. Lakini pasipo kujali kuumizwa huko tunastahili kusimama imara. Ephesians 6 tells us to put on the full armor of God so that we can stand and when we have stood we stand. Waefeso 6 inatuhimiza kwamba tuvalie silaha kamili kisha tusimame na tukishasimama tunasimama imara. Have you been the salt? Je umekuwa chumvi? When the Lord tells us about light in Matthew 5. Wakati Bwana anatuambia kuhusiana na nuru katika Mathayo 5. Light has two functions. Nuru ina kazi mbili. Actually it is one function that can be seen from two angles. Lakini ni kazi moja ambayo inaonekana kutoka pande mbili. When light comes into a place, nuru ikiingia mahali It chases away darkness. Ufukuza giza. It exposes bad ways. Inaweka wazi vitu vibaya. Inakuchomea. Inakuchomea. Yeah? Mm. The word the, the word of the Lord which is light eh Neno la Bwana ambalo ndilo nuru The word of the Lord which is light Neno la Bwana ambalo ndilo nuru is meant to expose our wrong ways Sio la kuanika njia zetu mbaya It is meant. It ili imekusudiwa kuanika njia zetu mbaya. Yes, it is meant to expose our wrong ways. Limekusudiwa kuanika njia zetu mbaya so that it can bring us to a point of repentance. Ili kwamba litulete mahali ambapo tutatubu and reconciliation with God. Na upatanisho na Mungu. The word of the Lord is not meant to massage our egos when we are in sin. Neno la Mungu sio la kukanda kiburi chetu wakati tumo katika dhambi. The word of the Lord is meant to expose our iniquity neno la mungu ni la kuanika uovu wetu 
And there are different ways in which God's word exposes our iniquity. Na kuna njia tofauti ambapo neno la Mungu huanika mauweka wazi uovu wetu. One we use the word of God as a measuring rod for our lives. Moja tunatumia neno la Mungu kama kipimo kwa ajili ya maisha yetu. Two, the people of God are meant to be a living example to those living in sin. Bili watu wa Mungu wanafaa kuwa ni mfano wa kwa wale watu ambao wanaishi katika dhambi. This is on account of the people of God being instructed in the ways of the Lord and knowing how to walk right. Hili ni kwa sababu ya jinsi ambavyo watu wa Mungu wanaagizwa kuishi katika njia na neno la Mungu njia ifayo. And the third way it is by the use of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Na ya tatu ni kwa kutumika kwa vipawa vya Roho Mtakatifu. Discernment is meant to expose that which is not right. Kupambanua ni kwa kuweka wazi kisicho kifaa. There are certain words of knowledge that are dropped in the hearts of God's servants which expose things that are not right. Kuna neno la maarifa ambalo linatiwa katika So if we are using the word of the Lord and we are living as an example according to the word of God. Kwa hivyo kama tunaishi kulingana neno la Mungu na tunatumia neno la Mungu tunaishi kama mfano And if we are allowing the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate through us. Na iwapo tunaruhusu vipawa vya Roho Mtakatifu kutenda kazi kutupitia sisi. Then we will be effective as light to expose the things that are not of God. Basi tutakuwa na uwezo wa kutosha kama nuru ili kwamba kuweka wazi vitu visivyo vya Mungu. The other angle of the operation of light. Sasa upande mwingine wa utendaji kazi wa nuru ya Mungu. It shows us the right way by showing us the path to follow. Kutuonyesha njia ifayo kwa kutuonyesha mahali ambapo tunafaa kupitia. Psalm 119 Verse 105 says thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Zaburi 119:105 anasema kwamba neno lako ni taa ya miguu yangu na nuru kwa njia yangu. And I love the Lord Jesus Christ because he showed us an example through himself. Na ninapenda Bwana Yesu Kristo maana alituonyesha mfano kupitia kwake yeye mwenyewe. In the scripture that we have read in John chapter 8. Katika maandiko ambayo tumesoma katika Yohana sura ya 8, Jesus refers to himself as the light of the world. Yesu anajiita nuru ya ulimwengu. And in Matthew 5 he calls us to be the same. Na Mathayo 5 anatuita tuwe hivyo hivyo. So the context of what was happening in John chapter 8 Kwa hivyo muktadha wa kile kilikuwa kinatendeka katika Yohana 8 was the woman who was caught in adultery was brought before Jesus Ilikuwa ni yule mwanamke aliyeshikwa katika tendo la uzinzi aliletwa mbele ya Yesu And the teachers of the law and the Pharisees na walimu wa sheria na mafarisayo were the ones who brought this woman to Jesus. And they were telling the Lord to pass judgment over her so that she can be stoned. So that they can cause Jesus to be at conflict with one of two laws. Ili wasababisha Yesu Kristo kukuwa na upinzani na na sheria mbili ama moja. So the first law that was operating in that time. Kwa hivyo sheria moja ambayo ilikuwa inatenda kazi wakati mmoja huo was the law of Moses. Ilikuwa sheria ya Musa. And according to the law of Moses. Na kulingana sheria ya Musa. She was supposed to be stoned. Alifaa kupigwa mawe. Verse 5, right? Mstari wa 5. And The second law na sheria pili was the law of the Romans. Ilikuwa sheria ya Warumi. The Romans were in leadership at that time w- over the Jews. Warumi walikuwa na utawala juu ya Wayahudi wakati huo. And according to Roman law, na kulingana na sheria ya Warumi, there were no executions to be carried out by the Jews. Hakuku hakunge kuwepo na na, na kutimiliza sheria eh, 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 kutoa hukumu kwa Wayahudi. So if Jesus had said stone her. Kwa hivyo Yesu angelisema mpige mawe. He would have been in trouble with the Romans. Angelikuwa na katika upinzani na Warumi. If he said do not stone her. Akisema msipo msimpige mawe. He would have been in trouble with the Jewish law. Angekuwa amepinga sheria ya Kiyahudi. So Jesus giving a direct answer would have pinned him against either authority. Kwa hivyo iwapo Yesu angelitoa jibu la moja kwa moja basi lingemweka katika ubishi na moja kati ya mamlaka hayo. But he stooped down and started writing on Lakini the ground. Lakini alina machini akaanza kuandika kwenye mchanga. This action is very distinct. Hili linaonekana kweli kweli. In Jewish tradition anyone who stooped down and started writing on the ground. Katika tamaduni ya Kiyahudi yote ambaye alina machini na akaanza kuandika chini kwenye mchanga is a person who was actively claiming to be God. Ni mtu ambaye alikuwa anadai kwamba yeye ni Mungu. This was an action that was reserved for God and God alone. Hili nilikuwa tendo ambalo alikuwa limetengwa kwa ajili ya Mungu na Mungu peke yake. You remember when Moses descended from Mount Sinai and then he broke the first tablets and he had to ascend back? Unakumbuka wakati Musa ambapo alishuka kutoka kwenye mlima wa Sinai kisha akaangusha zile amri kumi na akarudi tena? Scripture said that he received tablets already written on them. 
Maandiko yanasema Maandiko yanasema kwamba alipokea vipande ambavyo tayari vilikuwa vishaandikwa zile amri kumi God himself had written Mungu on the stone. Alikuwa ameandika kwenye yale mawe. So anyone who was writing on the ground at that time would be considered to be blasphemous. Kwa hivyo mtu yote ambaye angelionekana akiandika basi angehesabiwa kwamba anamkufuru Mungu. But Jesus himself being God, lakini Yesu Kristo akiwa Mungu aliandika. Amen. Amen. And Legally in Jewish tradition Yahudi, no one was meant to be a witness to a crime that they had committed so if you are guilty of adultery don't come to be a witness in an adultery case kwa hivyo wewe kama wewe ni msharati ama mzinzi usiuje kutoa kukuwa mshahidi kwa mahali ambapo kuna hukumu kuhusiana na usharati na uzinzi and that was the law the lord was using na hii ndio sheria ambayo bwana alikuwa anatumia when he said in verse 7 if anyone is without sin let him cast the first stone iwapo yeyote hana dhambi basi awe wa kwanza kutupajiwe la kwanza meaning if you have not sinned or have not committed the sin of adultery tupa mawe kumaanisha kwamba iwapo hujatenda ile tendo la uzinzi basi tupajiwe and this law comes from the book of Exodus 23 verse 2 na toka katika kutoka wa pili, which says you shall not follow a crowd to do evil or to pervert justice ambaye inasema kwamba hautafuata umati kwenda kufanya uovu ama kukwepa haki perverting justice could simply mean ili lingalimaanisha wacha huyo awe persecuted kwa hiyo ama Wacha huyo apigwe mawe kwa hiyo dhambi hata kama najua pia mimi nimeifanya. Eh wacha huyo ahukumiwe hata kama mimi nimefanya ahukumiwe kwa niaba yangu. And using that law they stepped away. Na kutumia hiyo sheria basi wakatoroka because in and of themselves walikuwa wanahukumika. Kwa sababu ndani mwao walikuwa wanahukumika. And Deuteronomy 19:15 states that no no passing of judgment should be done without the presence of a witness kumukumbu la torati 19 15 inasema ya kwamba kusiwepo na hukumu yoyote ambapo hapana mshahidi so vile hawa walienda there was no judgment to be passed over the lady wakati because hawa, there was no witness amen wakati walitoroka basi hakukuwa na shahidi kwa hivyo hukumu haingetolewa and in turn in verse 12 jesus offered the woman mercy na baadaye katika mstari wa 12 yesu kristo akapeana huruma nani rehema verse 12 of john mstari wa 12 huyu yohana 8 he offered mercy and told her not to sin again akapeana rehema na akamwambia kwamba asitende dhambi tena and jesus did all these things in the eyes of the public na yesu alifanya hayo yote mbele everyone was watching him. and in that instant he was both salt and light na katika halio alikuwa chumvi na alikuwa nuru the things which is the law of god which was righteous was effected in that time vitu ambavyo ni sheria ya mungu ambayo ndio utakatifu vilitimilika wakati huo so being salt he caused the righteous things to grow in that instance kwa hivyo akiwa chumvi akasababisha vitu vya utakatifu vikue wakati huo and the wickedness died at that time disinfecting no, properties of salt na uovu ukafa wakati huo hiyo ni hali ya chumvi ya kuua ubaya ama uchafu he exposed the wrong doing of the pharisees aliweka wazi matendo mabaya ya mafarisayo he exposed the wrong doing of the woman aliweka wazi matendo mabaya ya huyu mwanamke but he showed mercy to her lakini alimuonyesha rehema by ensuring that justice prevail kwa kuhakikisha kwamba haki imetawala And when he told her go and sin no more he played the role of light showing her the path to follow and by Jesus doing things these things in public he was telling us that it is our responsibility to put ourselves in public eye to be seen by everybody when he says in Matthew 5 16 you cannot light a lamp and then put it under a basket wakati anasema ya kwamba katika mathayo 5:16 huwezi ukasha taki shukaweka chini ya meza you need to place it on a stand so that when people see that light they give glory to god our father wahitaji kuweka kwenye kilima ama kiwango ili kwamba watu wakiona nuru hiyo watamtukuza mungu baba and we are meant to have a higher standard for living as the children of god na tumekusudiwa kuwa na kiwango cha juu cha kuishi kama watoto wa mungu and let me say a higher standard of moral living na meaning we are meant to 
be the salt and be the light and not doing as salt or doing as light. Kumaanisha kwamba tunafaa kuwa chumvi, tunafaa kuwa nuru na sio tu kufanya kama chumvi na sio tu kufanya kama nuru. And this mandate is a supernatural mandate. Na hili jukumu ni jukumu la kiungu. Meaning we need the power of God Kuma, to do it. Kumaanisha tuahitaji nguvu za Mungu kufanya hivyo. In our own natural humanity we cannot do it. Katika hali yetu ya kiasili ya wanadamu hatuwezi. But we need the power of God to do it. Lakini nguvu za Mungu kufanya hivyo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how can we be salt and light in our environment? Kwa hivyo tutakuwaje chumvi na nuru katika mazingira yetu. We can be salt and light by faith in our everyday living. Tunaweza kuwa chumvi na nuru kwa imani kwa katika maisha yetu ya kila siku. Applying our saltiness and our light in our everyday lives. Kutekeleza hali yetu ya chumvi na hali yetu ya nuru katika kila siku ya maisha yetu. In our families. Katika familia zetu. In our marriages and how we parent our children. Kwa sababu tunatenda kazi na tunabolea watoto wetu. One thing I want I want us to understand is that the family unit is currently under attack. If I should say so myself, it is the devil's biggest target. Now, in my line of work, I, I interact with so many people from broken homes. So many people who were neglected as, when they were meant to be parented. And even people from different family structures. And something that I want us to be aware of is that there is a narrative the devil has coined any family is family. What do I mean? He says that it's okay to have two fathers and children that's a family. He says having two mothers and children that's a family. He says if I am a woman and I decide to go to the spam bank and have children of my own and raise them alone, that is a family. The truth of the matter is that is apostasy. That is not how we are meant to operate. God wants one man, one woman. One man, one woman. Amen. Amen. So what this narrative is being passed down even to our children. Which is wrong. So what, what are we supposed to do then? As parents, we are meant to nurture our children in godliness. We need to parent them appropriately. Discipline them accordingly. And to teach them according to the statutes of the Lord. So that we can bath the fear of God in them. We can get this from Deuteronomy 6. From verse 6 to 9. And Deuteronomy 11 from verse 18 to 20. I'm just mentioning them for you to go and read them. And Proverbs 22 6. Something that I would want us to read. Please give it to me in message standard. MSB. MSG. Good. Thank you. Asante. The word of the Lord says, point your kids in the right direction. It is impossible to point someone towards something if you are not close to them if you are not around them if you are not with them so if we are mandated to point our children in the right direction switch me back to NLT same verse NLT says direct your children on to the right path and I think I think it is NKJV that says 
instruct or train your children in the way they should go. Nayo tafsiri ya NKJV nasema kwamba mlee ama mwagiza ama mfundishe mtoto wako katika njia ifayo. In the right direction. Katika njia ifayo. So if we are to point if we are to direct if we are to train. Kwa hivyo kama ni kuelekeza, kama ni kuonyesha, kama ni kufundisha. It means we need to be present with our children. Inamaanisha tunafaa kuwepo na watoto wetu. We are supposed to create time for those children. Tunafaa kuwa na wakati na watoto hao. Not just parenting them remotely. Sio tu kuwalea kwa kitanzi mbali. We need to be present in our children's tu, lives. Tunahitaji kuemo katika maisha watoto wetu. So wetu. that the words that we have inscribed in our hearts. Ni kwamba maneno ambayo yameandikwa mioni mwetu. And we have written them on the doorposts and in the pillars of our houses. Na tumeandika kwenye miimo ya milango ya nyumba zetu. And we have tied them on our wrists. Na tumefunga kwenye mikono yetu. We can impart that knowledge into our, our children. Tunapata maarifa hayo ndani ya watoto wetu. So two hours our every weekend does not suffice as parenting. Kwa hivyo masaa mawili kila weekend peke yake hayatoshi kama mzazi. Psychologically speaking, ki psychologia, I say, ninasema, give your child 20 minutes every day. Mtoto mpe mtoto wako dakika 20 kila siku. Consistently bila kukoma and trust me you will see a change na uniamini utaona mabadiliko now this is me speaking as a professional and an authority in my field sasa mimi ni huyu naongea sasa kitaaluma katika eh, eh, taaluma yangu give your children 20 minutes a day mpatie mtoto wako ama watoto wako dakika 20 kila siku you will see a change utaona tofauti hallelujah amen and 20 minutes i mean quality time spending time with them not kuanshia tv wako hapo wana watch na wewe una na dakika 20 inamaanisha kuwa na wao kutangamana nao moja kwa moja sio kuwawekea tv na kuwapa kitanzi mbali nao unaendelea na simu actively engaging them in conversation tangamana na wao ongea na wao kuwa na maongezi na wao find out what they interact with every day hata kujua ni nini wanakutana nacho kila siku allow them to ask you questions waruhusu wakuuliza maswali because if they don't ask you those questions kwa sababu asipokuuliza hayo maswali they will ask someone out there wataulize mtu huko nje and you are not in control of what that someone out there na hauna udhabiti juu ya yule mtu atakayewaambia amen amen we are meant to satisfy the curiosity of our children with the word of god tumekusudiwa kuhakikisha kwamba tunaridhisha ile hali ya kutaka kujua kwa mtoto tunawaridhisha na neno la Mungu there's a scripture i like in first peter chapter 3 verse 14 to 16 kuna maandiko napenda katika petro wa kwanza tatu mstari wa 14 hadi 16 verse 15 talks about us being ready to give an answer for what we have believed mstari wa 15 unaongelea kwamba tuwe tayari kupeana jibu kwa kila ambacho tunakiamini And more often than not we think that it is someone out there it is only reserved for someone out there who asks us what we believe. Na mara nyingi watu nadhani ya kwamba hilo huo mstari unatuambia kwamba tuwe tayari kwa wale wenye wako nje. But even our own children. Lakini hata watoto wetu will ask us questions about our faith. Watatuuliza maswali kuhusiana imani yetu. But we, if we have not equipped ourselves enough with scripture. Lakini kama hatuja hatujajitia uwezo na maandiko we cannot satisfy their curiosity. Hatuwezi tukaridhisha kutaka kujua kwao. So be studious in the things of God. Kwa hivyo kuwa na bidii ya kujifundisha vitu vya Mungu. And ensure that you teach these things deliberately to your children. Hakikisha kwamba unawafundisha hao watoto kwa kukusudia kwa watoto wako. And ensure that you are pointing them in the direction that is is in line with their calling na hakikisha kwamba unawaelekeza katika mwelekeo wa mwito wao our children have a calling watoto wetu wanao mwito The Lord releases their calling when he bats them into the world through us. Bwana huachilia mwito ndani mwao wakati ambapo anawazalisha kuwatupitia. So it is important for us to pray over our, our children and to share God's word with them so that the Lord can reveal to us the calling he has for their lives. Kwa hivyo ni muhimu sisi kuwaombea na kushiriki na wao neno la Mungu ili kwamba Mungu akatufunulie mwito alionao juu hao watoto so that we can lead them along the right path. Ili kwamba tukawaongoza katika njia inayofaa. Amen. Amen. In our marriages katika ndoa zetu we are meant to submit one to another tumekusudia kunyenyekeana first kwanza Ephesians 5:21 wa Efeso 5:21 it tells us to submit ourselves to one another In, out of reverence for Christ inatuambia kwamba tunyenyekeane kwa sababu ya heshima ya Kristo 
And one thing I came to realize kimoja, is that the wife has an authority over the husband ni and the husband has an authority over the wife. Na ana juu wa the authorities may not be the same kuwa hayako, hayatoshani, but it is authority nonetheless. Lakini ni mamlaka hata hivyo. So there are certain times that our wives will tell us something husbands. Kwa hivyo kuna kitu ambacho sisi kama waume tutaambiwa kitu na wake wetu. And we are meant to hear and submit. Na tunakusudia kusikia na kutii because our spouses are the loudest voice of God in our lives outside the voice that we carry inside us. Kwa sababu wapenzi wetu ndio sauti kuu zaidi ya Mungu eh, 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 nje ya ile sauti ambayo tunabeba moyoni mwetu. So if the Lord tells us something and we are not actively listening the Lord will use our spouse to talk to us. Kwa hivyo Bwana akituambia kitu na hatusikizi inavyofaa Mungu atatumia yule mpenzi wako kukunenea. So whether it is the husband or the wife? Awe mume ama mke? We are meant to submit to each other's authority. Tunafaa kunyenyekeana kwa mamlaka ya kila mmoja wetu. If as men we do not submit to the to the the wise authority that god has given our wives over us na sisi kama waume tusiponyenyekea kwa ile hekima ambayo mungu amepeatia wake wetu kwa juu yetu we might find ourselves in trouble with leadership tunaweza jipata na katika shida na uongozi ask abigail's husband uliza mkewe abigaili mumewe abigaili there must have been some things that Abigail had warned him against. Lazima kuna vitu ambavyo Abigail alikuwa amemuonya and he did not listen. Lakini hakusikiza. Akaenda kufanya mchezo mbele ya David akakamatwa. Mm. Ikabidi Abigail akuje a plead on behalf of the husband. So that is just to show us we need to listen to one another. Hiyo inamaanisha kwamba tunafaa kusikizana. That God speaks through our spouses. Kwamba Mungu unaenda kupitia kwa wapenzi wetu. Don't ignore Usipuuze. They might not be knowledgeable in some things like you. Wanaweza kuwa hawajui mambo kama wewe. But because God is using them. Kwa sababu lakini kwa sababu Mungu anamtumia yeye. Submit. Nyenyekea. Amen. Amen. We require a high level of discipline as those called as salt and light so as we do not so as not to disqualify ourselves tunahitaji nidhamu ya hali ya juu kwetu sisi ambao tumeitwa kuwa chumvi na kuwa nuru ili kwamba tusije tukaji eh, tukajiondoa the word of the lord tells husbands to wash our wives daily with the water of the word so that we can present them neno la mungu linaambia waume waoshe wanawake wao na maji ya neno ili kwamba waweze kuwasilisha kila siku blameless before the lord pasipo na mawa mbele za mungu how can you wash your wife with the word utamwoshaje the water of the word rather utamwoshaje mkeo kwa maji ya neno la mungu if you're not spending time with her iwapo wewe hauna wakati naye if you do not know what is happening in her heart ili haujui haujui kila ambacho kinatendeka moyoni mwake in the same way we cannot parent remotely we cannot do marriage remotely Vila ambavyo hatuwezi kufanya mambo ya malezi ya uzazi kwa kitanzi mbali vivyo hivyo hatuwezi fanya hivyo pia katika ndoa We need to be present Tuahitaji kuepo God has created a system of accountability within our homes Mungu ameweka mtindo wa kuwajibika katika maboma yetu by way of our children and our spouses Kwa njia ya watoto wetu na wapenzi wetu They are the ones who keep tabs on us wao ndio kila wakati wanatufuatilia on whether or not we are being light and salt iwapo tunakuwa nuru na, na chumvi ama pana when i was just about to get married wakati nilikuwa karibu kuoleka i remember one of my couple friends talking to me nakumbuka kati ya marafiki wangu aliyooa na wakiniongelesha and they told me a statement that i have never forgotten na wakaniambia kitu ambacho hasijawahi sahau they told me that my husband is the mirror i will be looking to into every day before i walk out of waliniambia kwamba mume wangu yeye ndiye atakuwa kioo ambacho nitakuwa ninamwangalia kabla nitoke kwenye nyumba so if there is something that is not correct my husband is meant to tell me. Kwa hivyo kama kuna kitu ambacho hakifai mume wangu anafaa kuniambia. And I am the mirror he looks into every day na before pia, he walks out. Nami pia ni kio ambacho anaangalia ndani mwangu kabla aondoke. So if something is not right in me he is meant to correct that. Kwa hivyo kama kitu hakiendi vizuri oh, ndani mwangu. If something mwangu, is not right in him I am meant to correct that. Kama kitu hakiendi vizuri basi nafaa nirekebishe. So we are to take correction. Kwa hivyo tunafaa kuchukua marekebisho. And our children na watoto wetu they keep us accountable wanatufanya tuwajibike because if we are saying one thing and we are doing something different kwa sababu kama tunasema kitu kimoja na tunafanya kingine our children will ask us questions watoto wetu watatuuliza maswali you tell them lying is wrong unawaambia kudanganya ni ni vibaya they happen upon you calling your boss and telling them today i can't come into work i am unwell au kisha wanakusikia unapigia mkubwa wako kazini simu unamwambia siwezi nikaja kazini kwa sababu mimi ni mgonjwa and we know it's a lie na tunajua ni uongo 
and the child asks you na mtoto anakuuliza mami mama why are you lying and you told us it is wrong to lie mbona wadanganya na ulituambia ni vibaya kudanganya the typical african parent basi mzazi wa kiafrika unaniuliza maswali na mimi ni mzazi wako eh mimi ni mzazi wako mbona waniuliza maswali they are meant to keep you accountable because you are teaching them the statutes of god wanafaa kukufanya uwajibike kwa sababu unafundisha sheria za mungu the word of the lord tells us that a disciplined person loves knowledge but a, a person who rejects correction is a fool neno la mungu linatuambia kwamba mtu mwenye nidhamu hukubali maarifa lakini yule mpumbavu ndio anakataa kurekebishwa proverbs 12:1 methali 12:1 so we are meant to take correction from wherever quarters it comes from kwa hivyo tunakusudia kuchukua marekebisho kutoka kokota kunakotokea whether it is your spouse or your child take correction iwe ni mpenzi wako ama mtoto wako chukua kurekebishwa kubali kurekebishwa they are the mirror you look into before you walk out of the house kio ambacho unaangalia ndani kabla uondoke katika nyumba yako they are the ones keeping tab- tabs on you to ensure that you are the salt and you are the light wao ndio wanakufuatilia kuhakikisha kwamba wewe ni chumvi na ni nuru and if anything they are the only ones who are legally allowed na wao to do it wao tu ndio wamekubaliwa kisheria kufanya hivyo apart from your spiritual authorities kando na mamlaka yako ya kiroho and the brethren you interact na wapendo ambao mnatangamana na wao so they are the first mirror you look into kwa hiyo ndio kio cha kwanza ambacho unakiangalia ndani in our thoughts and our speech we are meant to be salt and light katika mawazo yetu na masemo yetu tuahitaji kuwa chumvi na nuru the word of the lord tells us neno la bwana linatuambia in philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 to 8 katika wa filipi 4 kuanzia 6 hadi 8 it starts off by telling us not to be anxious for anything inaanza na kutuambia kwamba tusi na shaka na lolote it then tells us to commit our petitions to god in Nisha verse 7 na sala zetu kwa mungu and in verse 8 it tells us to think of what is pure excellent worthy and praisey na katika wa, praise worthy sorry na katika mstari wa 8 inatuambia tufikirie kuhusiana na kisafi chema cha kuheshimika na kinachostahili so our thoughts and our speech kwa hivyo mawazo yetu na matamshi yetu begins Oh, sorry our speech begins from the level of our thoughts matamshi yetu huanzia kwenye kiwango cha mawazo yetu so if we are thinking about what is pure what is excellent what is praiseworthy and kwa, all those other beautiful things kwa hivyo kama tunafikiria kuhusiana na kila chochoshimika kizuri chema na our, kinachosifika our speech will follow suit matamshi yetu yatafuatilia basi we are encouraged to have our light of wisdom shining in our speech tumekusudia kuwa na nuru ya hekima yetu ikang'aa katika matamshi yetu the word of the lord tells us in ecclesiastes 5 neno la Mungu linatuambia katika mhubiri tano that we should be quick to listen slow to speak kwamba tuwe wepesi wa kusikiza lakini wa wapole kwa kuongea we should not be blabber mouths tusiwe watu wa kuropokwa we should not make promises that we cannot keep and when we make promises that we can keep we should be quick to keep them na tusiweke nadhiri ambazo hatuwezi kutimiza na tukiweka hizo nadhiri basi tunafaa kuwa wepesi wa haraka kuzitimiza we are told in Matthew 5:37 to let our yes be yes and our no be no tunaambiwa katika Mathayo 5:37 kwamba ndio yetu ye ndio na la iwe la our speech should be surrendered to god and we should allow him guard them that doors of our tongues unenaji wetu unafaa kuwa umesalimishwa kwa Mungu na kuwaruhusu Mungu achunge milango ya ndimi zetu Psalm 141 verse 3 says set a guard upon the what the door of my tongue Zaburi 141 mstari wa tatu nasema kwamba weka mlinzi kwa mwenye mlango wa kinywa changu. James 1:8 encourages us not to be double minded. Yakobo 1:8 inatuhimiza tusiwe wa mawazo kuwili. So at the level of our thoughts we need to think pure thoughts we need not to be double minded. Kwa hivyo katika kiwango cha mawazo yetu tunafaa kuwa na mawazo masafi na tustahili kuwa na mawazo kuwili. And in turn our speech will be in line with the word of God. Na basi pia matamshi yetu itawiana na neno la Mungu. And we will do the will of God assault and light. Na tutafanya mapenzi ya Mungu kama nuru na chumvi. In our motives and our behaviors. Katika nia zetu na enendo yetu. Our deepest desire should be God and the things of God. Tamanio letu la ndani linafaa kuwa ni Mungu na vitu vya Mungu. That is Psalm 42 verse 1. Yona Zaburi 42 mstari wa kwanza. Romans 16:19 tells us to be excellent at what is good and to be innocent of evil. Warumi 16:9 inasema kwamba tufanye tuwe wema katika kilicho chema na kukua kukosa hatia katika uovu. 1 Corinthians 14:20 tells us to be as innocent as babies. Ya wa Korintho when it comes to evil. Wa Korintho wa kwanza 14:20 inatuambia kwamba tuwe wanyenyekevu na wasio na hatia kama watoto katika hali ya uovu it tells us to say no to evil inatufundisha kusema la kwa maovu 
We should desire to be vessels of honor, to be vessels that God can use. Tunatamani, tunafaa kutamani kuwa viombo vya heshima ambavyo Mungu anaweza tumia. When we were talking about the word are, you remember we said having an objective existence. Wakati tulikuwa tunaongelea hilo neno kukuwa ni, basi tulikuwa tunaongelea kuwa na lengo. So verse 21 of 2 Timothy 2 encourages us to become the kind of vessel that God can use. Mstari moja wa Timotheo wa pili uh, sura ya pili natuambia kwamba tu, tuimizike katika maarifa ya Mungu. Tu tu tuwe viombo ambavyo Mungu anaweza akatumia. Just say what. Msing to see some. Okay. Okay. Aya. <laughs> ah, yeah. It says become the kind of container that God can use. Inasema kwamba kuwa chombo ambacho Mungu anaweza tumia. So being a light in our interactions. Kwa hivyo kuwa nuru katika mkutangamana kwetu is of utmost importance. Ni muhimu mno. And we need to be a light even when we are handling difficult people. Na tunahitaji kuwa nuru hata wakati ambapo tunakabiliana na watu wagumu mno. Our anger should not disqualify us. Ja asira yetu haistahili kutuondoa. Our anger should not disqualify us. Asira yetu haistahili kutupotosha. Our actions even in anger should be Christ like. Matendo yetu hata katika asira yanafaa bado kufanana na Kristo. We should be the salt and the light in everything that we do. Tunafaa kuwa chumvi na nuru katika kila kitu ambacho tunafanya. To do this, kufanya hivi We must love discipline. Lazima tupende nidhamu. It is of utmost importance that we embrace learning. Ni muhimu sana kwamba tukumbatia kufundishika. Learning that gives us discipline from the Lord. Kujifundisha ambako kuna tupa nidhamu kutoka kwa Bwana. And that should be our way of life. Na hiyo ndio inafanya kwa ndio nje yetu ya maisha. Matthew 11:29. Mathayo 11:29. We should embrace the learning that teaches us discipline. Tukumbatie kujifundisha ambako kuna tufundisha eh, nidhamu. Because that is the only way that our hearts will be broken before God. Kwa sababu hiyo ndio njia pekee ambayo mioyo yetu itavunjika na kubondeka mbele za Mungu. That our hearts can turn towards God whenever we have wronged him. Kwamba mioyo yetu inaweza mgeukea Mungu wakati wote ambapo tumemkosea. And our hearts will submit to God when he is instructing us on what to do so that we can be salt and light. Na mioyo yetu itanyenyekea kwa Mungu wakati ambapo anatuagiza kwa kila ambacho cha kufanya ili kwamba tuwe chumvi na nuru ya ulimwengu. And even when we get fame for na, following God. Na hata tukipata kujulikana ama sifa kwa kum, kumfuata Mungu. Even when we get fame for serving God. Hata tukishifika kwa kumtumikia Mungu. That fame should not cause us to turn our faces and our heads away from God. Hiyo sifa istahili kutufanya tukose kumwangalia Mungu, tugeuke kutoka kwa Mungu. The purity of our hearts is tested with the fame we get. Usafi wa mioyo yetu hujaribiwa na kujulikana ama sifa tunazopata. So we should strive to ensure that that fame does not cause us to turn away from God because then we will be like the people of the world. Kwa hivyo tunafaa tungangane tuone kwamba hiyo sifa haitondoi kwa Mungu kwa sababu tutakuwa basi kama watu wa ulimwengu. Because the Lord uses this fame to test the purity of our hearts. Kwa sababu Mungu hutumia sifa hii kujaribu usafi wa mioyo yetu. Look at Proverbs 27:21. Angalia Mithali 27:21. Our hope should be in God. Tumaini letu lafaa kwa katika Mungu and in no one else. Na sio mwingine yeyote. If we are to effectively be and I, not do like salt and light. Iwapo tutakuwa na sio tu kufanya kama nuru na chumvi. In closing, katika kumaliza, the fear of the Lord should be so evident in us. Kicho cha Mungu kinafaa kuwa ku, 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 kuwa dhahiri ndani mwetu that there is a perceivable discernible change everywhere we go. Ya kwamba kuna mabadiliko ambayo yanaweza onekana, yanaweza dhihirika, yanaweza pambanulika kokote tuendako. Whenever anyone looks at us, they should see the fear of God. Wakati wote yeyote anatutazama anafaa kuona kichwa cha Mungu ndani mwetu. In every aspect of our lives. Katika kila eneo la maisha yetu. That is how we will be salt and light. Hivyo ndivyo tutakuwa chumvi na nuru ya ulimwengu. So I would like us to reflect and ask ourselves. Ningelipenda tutafakari na tujiulize. Have we been the salt and the light as the Lord has called us to be? Je, tumekuwa chumvi na nuru jinsi ambavyo Mungu ametuita? In our everyday lives, have Kat- we been salt, have we been light? Katika maisha yetu ya kila siku, je, tumekuwa chumvi, tumekuwa nuru? Are there areas where we have fallen short? Je, kuna maeneo ambayo tumepungukiwa? 
Are there areas where the Lord needs to reconcile us to himself for not being salt? Je, kuna maeneo ambapo Bwana anahitaji kutupatanisha na yeye mwenyewe kwa sababu hatujakuwa chumvi pasavyo? Are there things that have grown around us that are not of God and we have allowed them to grow? Je, kuna vitu ambavyo vimemea, vimemea vikatuzunguka ambavyo sio vya Mungu na tumevikubalia vikanawiri? Have have there been things where we needed to shine our light to expose this wickedness or to show a path and we have not done so? Je, kuna mahali ambapo tulihitaji kuangaza nuru yetu na kuanika mambo mabaya na maovu na hatukufanya hivyo? I'd like to encourage us even as we stand. Ningelipenda kuahimiza tunaposimama that you allow the lord search your heart lakini kwamba mruhusu mungu achunguze moyo wako and if his spirit convicts you of these things na roho wa mungu akikushawishi kuhusiana na hivi vitu that you come to repentance in god kwamba ukapate kutubu mbele za mungu i'd like to invite the bishop to close ningelipenda kumkaribisha askofu ili afunge amen Amen. Amen. I just want us to pray. Nataka tuombe. Salt is very important in life. Chumvi ni muhimu mno katika maisha. Not only on our food. Sio tu kwa chakula chetu, but even in our bodies. Lakini hata katika mili yetu. If you happen to get a cut on your finger, iwapo unazaje kata kwenye kidole chako, and you lick your own blood, you'll f- you'll have that uh, salty taste in blood na ulambe damu yako utasikia damu yako inaonja kama chumvi that is what prevents clotting hilo ndio hiyo ndio huwa inazuia damu isigande and that is why the moment it does not have that warmth of the body na ndio maana wakati damu inakosa ile joto la mwili and you look at where the blood has dropped na uangalia mahali ambapo hiyo damu imeanguka it dries so fast like sweat inakauka haraka kama jasho so salt is key in life kwa hivyo chumvi ni muhimu katika maisha and when jesus declared that you are the salt na yesu alipotangaza kwamba wewe ni chumvi he clearly spoke about us being the effects to life. Alikuwa anaongea kwamba sisi ndio viwezesho vya uhai. Try testing some meat without salt. Jaribu kula nyama bila chumvi. And that day you will say meat is not sweet. Na utasema kwamba hiyo siku nyama sio tamu. But anything the moment it encounters salt. Lakini chochote kinapokutana na chumvi it upgrades it so our lives are meant to upgrade those that we encounter kwa hivyo maisha yetu yanafaa kuongeza kuinua watu ambao tunakutana nao as we ponder on these things tunapotafakari mambo haya let's ask ourselves tujiulize have i been the salt che nimekuwa chumvi that jesus expects me to be ambaye yesu ananitarajia niwe let's just lift our hands and let's just go before god in our own words katika maneno yetu and just tell the lord natumwambie bwana help me lord nisaidie bwana in any area katika eneo lolote that you know ambalo unajua you have lost your taste umepoteza ladha yako just tell the lord to restore you mwambie bwana kurejesh just go before God genuinely search my heart O oh Lord examine me in every area of my life that Lord in whatever area that I have not had that test and effect to the world help me Lord to reclaim it Father we stand in your awesome presence we come before you Lord we want to open our hearts to you we open our lives to you we we lay them bare before you and pray that you over God may you help us Lord where we have fallen short of your standards as the salt and the light Father I pray renew within us rekindle within us the light my Father that you are put in us that we may shine before the world in the name of Jesus Lord we pray for cleansing and sanctification in our hearts and in our lives Lord may you quicken us may you stir up within us that desire that hunger 
that we may be what you have called us to be. Father, where we have fallen short, we repent today and we pray that we are rising again. We are rising again. We are taking our rightful place. We are taking our deliberate resolve to shine wherever we are. Dear Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for taking us back for restoring us oh Lord how we prayed Father that even in our marketplaces where we are serving Lord may you help us to be effective even to the people we encounter to shine even in places of our work places of our businesses may we shine brighter in the name of Jesus Christ oh we thank you Lord oh we bless your name how we pray even for this week for your grace oh Lord that as we go to our places give us victory in this week bless our lives bless the work of our hands bless our business bless our families bless our children even as they travel back to school dear Lord we are praying and speaking the blessings of God upon them may you protect them and keep them my father even from the pressures of the world we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus name Amen Amen. Just give the Lord a good hand. Amen.